This is the video for the Dice Roll Lab. I've gone ahead and set up the UI already and I've added a couple things to the script. Um, there are a couple things I do want to point out to you, um, some issues that might arise, some things um, to consider. When you first set up your GUI, make sure that your canvas is, is set to scale with screen size. Um, this is the first thing you should always do when you create your canvas. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues when you try to build this out and you don't, and it's not built to the correct screen size and your UI is floating all over the place. So first things, make sure this is scale with screen size. And I tend to have a better luck if I make the match set to height. The next thing you should do then is remember what your reference resolution is. And I just usually stick to 800 by 600 for this class. It works fine enough. Go over to game and make sure that this says 4x3, not the free aspect, but actually set it to the 4x3. So this is correlates to this. So if you set up your UI after that, it will look fine when you build it out. Um, if you haven't done that, if you already set up the GUI and didn't do that, I would take the time to do that before you continue on. There's not too much UI in here. It won't be uh, that big of a deal to um, adjust this after you make those changes. Your end result will end up better. The other thing I do want to make note of is that be careful how your text is on your um, labels here. So if I click the sides box, do you see how it is over, over on top of our input field? When we hit play, um, and I think I should be able to play this, um, we can't enter into this text box because this is over it. Um, we can click over here and enter, but most users would not think of that. So it's very important that if you're having issues with entering into this, in the, entering into these kind of things, make sure that you don't have anything accidentally over on top of that. Same thing goes with buttons. If this was way too big and over the button, um, there'd be issues with clicking the button, like it's not going to register because it's, you're actually clicking on the text object instead. Okay, so things I've already done. I've already set up my UI. I already have my game controller object that I just created by right-clicking, creating an empty object, and renaming it. I've already attached my script, my game controller script, to this. And I do have some public variables. I'm going to go over those, but I've already hooked those up as well. And I've already gone ahead and created the event for my button down here. And I have that already hooked up as well. If you don't remember how to do that, I would suggest going back to the to the UI script lab and review how to set that stuff up. Um, but we are just going to kind of jump into the programming of this. So let me open up Visual Studio and show you what I'm starting off with. So I have using Unity Engine UI. We need that for doing our UI stuff. I also need um, some public variables right here, such as text for main text, text for total text, and an input field I'm calling input field. Um, I don't know what you named yours, but these just correlate to the main text is this, the total text is this, and this is just the input field right here. So um, if you named them something else, you could call these something else. I like to keep the names the same so that it is not confusing. So I know what's supposed to line up with what. Um, one other thing I do want to do is for all of our labs here, labs, assignments, projects, wh whatever, anything that you're handing in that is a um, script file, you need to make sure that you have the header that we provide with this. And you can just locate this in the Dropbox. It's at the top of the Dropbox in right here. So we can just highlight this and control C to copy. Go to our lab. Go to the top. Control V to paste in. Um, obviously, fill in all the information too. Um, what lab is this, your name, what section, this, the year and um, 
semester might be different, who your instructor is, and the current date. Do not forget this. This is part of your grade. If you do not do this, it's possible that your instructor might not grade your lab or assignment, so do not forget this. We also need to make sure that we're leaving some comments. Comments are also part of your grade, so I'm just going to kind of go ahead and leave a comment in here that um, these are our public variables. These are all UI elements from Unity. The other thing I also have is one private variable at um, class level, and it's going to just be an integer called total that holds the total amount of rolls that we've had. Because if you read the directions, you're supposed to be able to roll a dice, or die, I guess, and as you roll them, you total up what all of your rolls are. So we're going to use this variable to hold that. So holds the total of all the rolls. Okay, so um, this one only has two events, a start event and an on roll button click event. Um, I like to use the start event to make sure that my text is set up the way that it needs to be set up and that any um, class level variables up here that need to be, um, be given a value are given a value. Because total right now it doesn't have anything in there, so when the game starts, we need to make sure that total is equal to zero. Um, otherwise, we're going to run into problems later. I also want to make sure that my main text dot text gives a message to the player, something along the lines of enter number of sides. And yeah, sorry, and click to roll. Good enough. Um, I also want to make sure that my total text is set to zero. Oops, forgot that. Sorry about that. So total text that text is equal to total is equal to zero. Um, I'm going to double check that this does work correctly, so I'm going to hit save, pop back over to Unity. Remember, I already set up um, my game controller, so I already have this set up. So um, if yours doesn't work, make sure that you did set it up in Unity as well. So let's hit play. Oh, that didn't change. Oh, I know why. Sorry. This needs to get bigger. Let's try that again. And that looks good. Okay, so let's actually get into programming. Um, let's leave some comments in here since you do need to leave comments. Let's say um, total is set to zero. All on screen text displays start messages. So most of our code is going to be on our in our on on roll button click. We've initialized with the start, but this is going to be the main thing in here so that um, we're in a lot more code. So I do want to kind of plan out what's going to have happen in here, and we're just going to kind of start from the beginning. What has to happen when that roll button is clicked? The first thing that we need to have happen is um, the number of sides is read from the input field. A random number generator is used to roll a single die with the number of sides given. Um, let's make this a little bit easier to read so we know, know all of our steps. There we go. The dice roll is added to the total. The text on screen is updated. So we have about four steps. That's not too bad. Um, this is all stuff we've actually done before in previous labs. Um, you might want to take the opportunity to pause the video, maybe try it out yourself before you watch the rest of the video. Um, it's good practice, and th again, this is all stuff we've already done. It's not 
not anything too crazy. So let's start at the beginning. Let's grab that, um, let's grab the number of sides. So I call mine input field. If you call it something else, just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna make a new integer called sides and set that equal to the input field it is dot text because that will give me um, the size but if we hover over it we're getting an error cannot implicitly convert type string to int which means that we need to change this from a string to an integer it doesn't do it automatically so kind of as review from last lab we're going to write int dot parse and put these in some parentheses and that's all we had to do. So this part is done. Um, if it helps, we could always just change this to like a plus sign so we know where we're at. A random number generator is used to roll a single die with the number of sides given. Okay, so let's make a new integer called roll that we're going to use a random number generator with. So random dot range. And we want to start with one, not zero, since this is dice. I don't really ever, I don't think I've ever seen a dice that starts with zero. There's probably some out there, but generally we think of dice starts with one. And we want to go um, with how many sides the user put in. And if you remember about random number generators, it's up to but not including the final number in here. So if we want to include that last one, which is most likely what we want to do, when people want a six-sided die, they want to see a six at some point, you know, one through six. So to take that into to take that into consideration, we're just gonna go with sides plus one. So that we know we also get that number, that last number. Okay, so we got that. That one's all done. Next, the dice roll is added to the total. There's two different ways we could do this. I'm gonna show you the straightforward way and then I'm going to show you the more efficient way. So we can just say total because the total is that class level variable. Remember um, your scope since we did this at the top we can access this anywhere in any of these events down here. Um, makes our life a little bit easier. So we're going to say total is equal to total plus roll. You could also do it this way. Rather than typing all of this out, we could just say total plus equals roll, and that means the same thing. Um, a little bit shorter, a little bit easier to write, whichever way you're most comfortable with. And then this one is done. So last is just updating to the screen. Um, so first, let's update that main text. So we'll just say main text dot text is equal to roll and we're going to get an error because it does not like that we are trying to throw an int into a string very easy to take care of we're just going to do a dot to string with our little parentheses on the end and that's it um, we also need to update that total text so we'll do total text dot text is equal to and we want to keep that total is equal to in the front so let's add that first. And I am going to do like a little bit of a space afterwards. It looks nicer that way. And we're just going to concatenate the new total on the end. Um, concatenate is just a fancy word that just means we're going to kind of add it to the back. Um, you see that word used a lot in string manipulation. It just means adding on to the end of it. We're going to make one big string out of little ones. But watch what happens. Remember up here we had to convert this integer to a string? Well, I'm going to add this. I'm just going to do a plus total. And notice it's not giving us an error. Um, if you are adding an integer onto something that's already a string, like if you're concatenating it onto a string, you don't have to do the dot to string. It, it does it kind of, it assumes that this is what you're doing. Um, so that's kind of nice. and. We are actually all, that's the whole lab. This is, 
this is all we have to type into here. So I'm going to save it and go back to Unity to test this out. Um, as a reminder, I did set up my button already. I already set everything else up. Um, so if don't forget to do that before you hit play. Hit play. Let's do the classic six sides. So we get six and totals equal to six. Three. Six plus three is nine. Twelve. Let's go with the twenty sided. So ten. Thirty-five. 46, so we know our game is now working. And um, again, don't forget to add your comments. This is a good set of comments to have for this one. Same thing with these. Don't forget to put this at the top of your labs. Um, don't forget to build it out. If you need help building it out, refer back to the UI sampler scripting lab because um, I stepped through doing that with you guys. But that's the whole lab. Um, Hopefully this was helpful for to you. Oh, helpful to you.